Welcome back, Nerglings. Today we are taking a gander back down that familiar road called Nostalgia, and learning how many members of this great community found their way into wargaming. But before we start, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an update. So, just what are we talking about when I say ways into wargaming? What I mean is, what ignited the flame of interest in the hobby for you? Was it watching Conan the Barbarian, reading Lord of the Rings, being invited to play Dungeons and Dragons, going into your first hobby store, or a family member that started it all off? To start, I'll recount how I got into the hobby. On my eighth birthday, my uncle gave me the illustrious boxed game Battle Masters. I was already knee deep in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, even at this young age. So to be able to play out the very battles I was imagining in my head for real, as it were, was something very special indeed. From there I was hooked and bought up Hero Quest, Space Crusade, Warhammer and of course 40k. Let's carry on and see how the rest of you got that spark for painting little fellows of lead, plastic and, dare I say it, resin. Daniel Georges started with Hero Quest, but he also had Battle Masters as well. It came a little later, and he still has them both too. Dave Weston started with Battle Masters and he once turned up his nose at a full set for £10 at a car boot sale. Oh, the regret. Siegfried Kugler's brother bought a copy of it a few years ago. It's nice for kids, and he absolutely loves the hex field. He made a custom hex-based tabletop for the kids. Jor Vanderwall bought Battle Masters for the miniatures and the Mighty Tower all those years ago. It was a cheap option back then. Aidan Holman, Battle Masters, you say? Regiments for the Empire, says he. Matt Taylor bought it for the miniatures too. He had a couple of games as the makers intended, then split the minis with a friend. The artillery, halberdiers, archers and knights still play a small part in his Empire army. Daniel King bought his copy from Games Workshop's Games Day in 1993. They had loads of copies in and were showing it off. He couldn't resist it, and it was featured in White Dwarf. He remembers being inspired to paint the miniatures from their examples. Jorgen Carlsen actually went straight in with Warhammer. The gameplay was so-so in Battle Masters, but bought it and both expansions for the miniatures back in the day and his tower still gets some good use. Jonathan Roberts started with Space Crusade and then Rogue Trader. He still has Space Crusade and Hero Quest 2, happy days, and along with Necromunda and Battlefleet Gothic. James Patterson's first war game was Battletech. A friend came round to pick him up for a game and saw his large collection of painted Citadel miniatures. He bought them for D&D and got carried away with buying and painting. Paul Storm started with Hero Quest, then Battle Masters. Two boxes of each, hmm, illustrious. Sometimes he sees incomplete boxes of Hero Quest, or a batch of Battle Masters minis online in trading forums, but it certainly isn't easy to see an entire box in a thrift store anymore. Doesn't stop him from looking though, yeah, you and me both. Nathan Morris had three sets of Battle Masters. He got them, understandably, for the miniatures. One for Christmas, and then bought two more on clearance for $10 each. And that is outrageous. He did head swaps when the Empire Knight set came out, and recently converted some foot troops into swordsmen. A kid in Lucas Jotun's neighbourhood had Hero Quest and Battle Masters. He never had them himself until decades later, but that was his first contact with 
wargaming. When he was about 14 years old, he went on a class trip to Hastings, where, in a store, he found a few of the epic army boxes. A friend of Daniel Kirk's introduced him to second edition 40k, and it just kind of spiralled from there. Aaron Thompson says that this takes me back to the early 90s, my first introduction to Warhammer. There was a flyer in the box for Games Workshop, which led to a purchase of my first White Dwarf, and soon after a trip to the newly opened Belfast store to buy the 4th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle box set. Richard Nichols says he painted all the miniatures for Battlemasters, and has used it in demo games a few times at the Tolkien Festival in Birmingham. Dave Langton's first contact with Wargaming was the Citadel Combat cards, closely followed by HeroQuest, and he remembers being fascinated by the Space Wars and Chaos Chaps. J. Edward Scott found that Battle Masters had some excellent miniatures, and were a pretty cheap way to start an army. Behold the dull might of the Grand Duchy of Einsposen. Duncan McGregor says tunnels and trolls at school, then HeroQuest, Space Crusade, and then, of course, Epic 40,000. Battle Masters came later in his hobby journey, weirdly. Wes Sims bought a copy of Battle Masters a few years ago to get his son into wargaming. Apparently, it worked. Well done, sir. Thomas Bielik remembers when Battle Masters came out. He recalls one of the older gents in the gaming group carrying a stack of six copies of the game to the register. That lucky duck. Mock Mike said that Battle Masters was the free hit that got him addicted. Brent Hartman says he's got them all, and I believe it. Steve Rubio's first wargaming experience was Space Hulk, first edition. He read the background book about Exterminatus. Nicholas Roquigny says that Talisman led into RPGs, which in turn led into miniature wargames. Leland Erickson says that his gateway into the hobby came in the 1970s with the granddaddy of them all, that being Stargard. In all of its simplistic, pulp fiction, Heinlein inspired glory. Hell, he still has quite a few of the original figures dating back to high school, although he repainted them in college when acrylics became a thing. Andrea Stephanie Crockett says, My brother talked me into playing Imperial Commander, the mass battle rules for laser burn. Barry Wackenshaw says, The choose your own adventure books got me started. Robert Dowell says, Battle Masters wasn't my entry game, but I picked up a complete copy in a charity shop for five quid after my nephew pointed it out and said, Uncle Robert, is that what you play? We played through the campaign twice. He loved it. A great entry level game. I wholeheartedly agree with you, sir. Malcolm Cooney said his friend bought a wood elf back from England to Ireland one summer in the 80s. Joshua Van Z says Battle Masters was a classic. I recently picked up a copy in Japanese, complete too. Box art is all the same. Looks great. Stuart Mumford says that HeroQuest comic got him started, closely followed by HeroQuest and then Advanced HeroQuest. Of course, this led to Space Hulk. Colin Spears says, if by hobby you mean fantasy wargaming, a demo of the game The Emerald Tablet in 1977. Warhammer came later. Gary Rowe said that he and his brother had Battle Masters, Hero Quest, Advanced Hero Quest, Space Crusade, Advanced Space Crusade, Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Fantasy, Space Marine, Battlefleet Gothic, Warhammer Quest, Necromunda, Battletech, Mech Warrior. But they started it all with Hero Quest. Robin Prince says the core of his first Warhammer Empire army came from two sets of Battle Masters. As he recalls, he got them for 9 dollars each. That, sir, is a steal. 
James Sanders says the naval game Blood Seas, but he's not sure if he still has the figures. Once this virus thing ends, he has some unopened Dark Dwarves boxes that he would like signed. Adam Booth says he wishes he had the means to get Battlemasters all those years ago. Tony Smith says that originally unaware of the link, the Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone fighting fantasy books and then Dungeoneer, then HeroQuest and of course Space Crusade. David Asp says he found a complete copy of Battlemasters at a Goodwill store for seven Aussie dollars a few months ago. Too good to pass up, although felt a little guilty getting change back from a tenner. <laughs> Outrageous. Justin Graham Compton says fighting fantasy books to start, followed by Space Crusade and 40k 2nd edition, with a little 4th edition Skaven and Mano War on the side. That's what she said! <laughs> Michael, please. Serious. Please. Come on. All that survived the subsequent 30 years were the Skaven. Hmm. So you are a connoisseur. George Pocock says Dark World. Hmm. Very nice. My good friend Adam Nichol says a mix. Third edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle and Hero Quest. And the Mighty Warriors box in particular. Aaron Howdell says Citadel Miniatures in around 1983. He just really liked the metal figures. The games came later, but he never really played much. Just really liked those figures. Jamie Loft says Fighting Fantasy Books, aged 11, Lone Wolf Books. Then a friend got him into D&D and from there, Warhammer. Michael Kukla, my father did model planes, so I always wanted to try something similar, and my cousins played the old Warhammer fantasy battle game. One of them had a large army of orcs, so I chose that game. Very few people played the game where I lived, so I had two armies to play with friends who weren't into the model aspects. High Elves and Skaven from the I Love Blood set. Tim Wegner says, It all depends on how you look at it. For myself, it started probably when I was about 11 or 12, and the progression is as follows. Dungeons and Dragons, and then the Fighting Fantasy game books. Talisman board game. Then probably the biggest influence to tabletop would have been the Milton Bradley series of board games, which included Shogun, Fortress America and such. Soon after, our group started playing alternative board games like Warrior Knights and Mighty Empires. Around that time, that's when we discovered Warhammer, right at the tail end of 3rd edition and beginning of 4th. We tried a few other tabletop war games at the time as well, mainly based on cost to play, but they didn't compare to Warhammer as far as gameplay goes, so we stuck with Warhammer for a good many years. Steve Casey says Warhammer 1st Edition. Nick Beer says he was 30, and his work colleagues, who were 18, asked him to play a game of 40k. He said he's far too old, but they convinced him to try it out. He played one of their orc armies against Tyranids, saw the warp blast blow up a buggy, and in one fell swoop was hooked. A week later, he got the Necron Codex, and he has played almost every week since. That was in Warhammer 40k, 3rd edition. David Daly Ferrari says, I think Hero Quest. I think you're right, sir. JC Fairclough says, going way back, my dad had a ton of airfix. 176 Cowboys and Indians in his wardrobe. Like 20 boxes. I took a couple of boxes and played with them in the garden. Also, my mum had Hero Quest in the wardrobe, and I played with the gargoyle a lot. Not sure which was first, but I couldn't have been older than three or something. Wow. Joe Kim Johansson says, Epic. Mmm, mighty fine. <laughs> 
Mighty fine. Curtis Fell says, Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. I played a bit of 2nd edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle with my brother, but bought and read Rogue Trader on the week of release. I was 11 and started my Marines from there. Angron Matt says, the original 1988 version of Adeptus Titanicus. He thinks he bought it from Toy World. Saw it and thought, giant robotic machines battling in the future. Hmm. Actually, what originally got him hooked was a mate lent him the original Rogue Trader rules for a squiz one weekend in Year 7. Ah, my friend Litrick Turnovis says, when he was young, he started with the launch box of Warhammer 6th edition and fell in love with the pure concentrated fun of the orcs and goblins. After the miniatures came the scenarios, and after that, the lore. Finally, the gameplay. David Kola Sr. says, Talisman got him into wargaming. It was from an ad he saw in an old white dwarf that he picked up because it had an advanced Dungeons and Dragons adventure in it. Never want to mince words, Richard Hale says D&D. Pele Kieser says he started with roleplay back in 1980 or 81, which became slightly more serious as time went on. When his back went, he tried to find a hobby he could actually do, and found a Warhammer box that he won as a bonus prize in some bowling competition, and thought, if I like fantasy and roleplay, this might do it. So he started diving into lore and painting. Not so much the playing, but he tries to remedy that with solitaire solutions. Justin Berman says it was seeing a random Harlequin figure in 1987. The colour of the figure astonished him, and the game was obviously 40k. Alex Banner says he used to play Dungeons and Dragons and started using Warhammer Quest to go with it, then Warhammer Fantasy Battle and eventually moved into actual wargaming. Max Humber says Warhammer 40k 2nd edition. Very good, sir. Lawrence Blanche says Society of Ancients. Mmm, illustrious indeed. Jack Botcher says a mate of his in primary school snuck some plastic Saurus warriors into school in his lunchbox. He was enthralled, but the game that got him into the hobby was actually 40k. 3rd edition was new and Tyranids had just got their updated look. Many of the models they still use now. He got two boxes of gaunts, some gene stealers, Tyranid warriors and a biovore for his 10th birthday. He says it was the best present ever and I would have to agree with you. Jason Fulford said he was a D&D &D player, so had a lot of miniatures. It was Warhammer Fantasy Battle 1st edition for about a week then 2nd edition came out. His old man played Napoleonics, but that didn't do anything for him at the time. Barry Young says he didn't stick with anything when he was young, so when he saw friends playing Warhammer, his mother said, I'll buy you whatever you need to get you going, but you got to stick with it. 26 years later, here he is still painting and loving the hobby. Chris Budd says that when he was eight years old, he walked past the local games workshop store, and as he looked in, he saw all the models and people playing. So he begged his mum to let him go in. He saw people playing a bit of everything, Warhammer, 40k and Lord of the Rings. He first picked up a box of lizard men, but very quickly also picked up a box of Imperial Guard too. Even back then though, he was only ever interested in painting. He would have the odd battle uh, in his back garden, but never a real game. That came much later. Eventually, after a couple of months, he invested in the Lord of the Rings miniatures too, and would have massive adventures around his town with the main characters. When he got back into the hobby as an adult, and up until now, 40k has been his main focus, and what has kept him in the hobby. Diego Serrate says it was Warhammer 4th edition for him, but previously got hooked by the late 80s models.
Tom Barbelay says, if you asked me a year ago, I would say I was an old hammer collector and reader of old rules first. The US is pretty useless at finding other old hammers, so I also create my own rules. And I'm in the process of getting one of my more played rule sets into a book. It's in the RPG miniature skirmish game spectrum, although I have written wargaming rules and we'll probably get more into that. I'm pretty well done with collecting now though. I have an amazing Nurgle army, Rochi Rot Fort is still finishing, and old wood elf and dwarf armies. Not to mention a smattering of Slanesh and that chicken god. The main aim is to eventually return to the UK to find some other old hammers and start an old hammer old folks home. But smatterings of 28mm historical, predominantly World War II, and a couple of solid armies of World War II 20mm, which I just use for skirmish in small places, including a good group of Soviet partisans, which always end up putting dirt and leaves in unprotected panzers' fuel tanks. My main project is simulating London in 1940, with a slight chance of invasion, which isn't wargaming based. Jeff Solomon Sims says battle droids, then rogue trader. Before that, it was all just RPGs. Jonas Whedon says, I've always lived with war games, since my father played all kinds of tactical, hexagon based war games and others. Phil Curran says, I began playing with toy soldiers as a little one with Britain soldiers, then into Airfix 132 scale and HO 00 scale figures. This wasn't wargaming mind you, just playing with them as a kid. I got my first wargaming figures after a friend and his brother started playing the Stormbringer RPG from Chaosium around 1981 or 82. I ordered a giant goblin in plate armour from Asgard miniatures, then more RPG miniatures from Citadel when they were at Eastwood. I branched into Airfix double zero scale Napoleonic Wargaming, then Warhammer 1st Edition. After that, Mordheim and 40k. I took part in the first Citadel Open Day at their factory in Eastwood, Nottingham, and played Chaos in the Warhammer competition. Came third. Not that there were that many players. Rusty Grunwald says he started with Avalon Hill board games and when Battletech came out in the mid 80s, started to collect miniatures. He needed infantry for his Battletech games and Games Workshop had some in those epic Space Marine box sets, so he branched out from Battletech into other systems and eras. Palmer Clarkson says, my gaming experience started with RPGs and the Dungeons and Dragons red box. My tabletop wargaming started with Rogue Trader. Harry Howe says, Conan the Barbarian the film got me into fantasy gaming almost 40 years to the day. Previously, movies like The Longest Day and Airfix Toy Soldiers, of course. Thomas Evans says he started with Battletech 4th edition. It looked like a cool board game he could play with his dad, although he never did. He took a sabbatical for 10 years and the local game store he worked for had Warhammer. A dear friend encouraged him into it. My chaotic nemesis George Chapin says, just like me, he started with Battle Masters. Kudos, kudos. Mythos Kushinada says, I was first introduced to wargaming with the old school Battletech as a kid and absolutely loved it. I moved away from the friend that owned that game and didn't think about wargaming for a long time. Then, as an adult, there was a demo game offered at my local game store and I was introduced to Warhammer 40,000 and I loved the hobby ever since. A wolf viking on a wolf mount was the thing that had me sold right away. My good chum Richard Thomas 
said his dad read him The Hobbit as a child. He was into historical wargaming and took him to a wargaming show, and this ignited the interest. Andrew Wilson started with fighting fantasy in the early 80s. Although you could say his proper initiation into wargaming was buying the 1985 Citadel Miniatures Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Monsters box, which he still has most of 37 years later. Wolf Raff says, Early 90s when I first saw the game played in a local comic book store. I loved the models, but wasn't really interested in the game. I started collecting in the early 2000s, and have been doing that and painting from then on. The first model I ever bought was Nagash, and the first model I ever painted was a generic necromancer. David Musgrave says that fighting fantasy books followed by Dungeons and Dragons at about the age of 12 or 13. Then that led to getting character models and bad guys. Grenadier models most often as they had decent RPG type ranges, which in turn develops into early era Warhammer. The upscaled range that Citadel did plus the drastic plastic orcs and the still pretty much unmatched Skeleton Horde set were the first of the plastic kits he remembers getting. Graham Oram says playing with big robots in Adeptus Titanicus after playing Battletech with cardboard models, actual plastic models were amazing. Stephen Jameson says that when he saw the cover of the Warhammer 40k 2nd edition Ultramarines Codex. Neil Durando says he bought Tank Trap after Milton Bradley's Tank Battle and Stratago in maybe 1978. There actually was a little game to it and wrote a few more rules. Daniel Siegel says Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Sean Ashby says he was given a white dwarf at school by a teacher to design a tank for a project he was doing when he was about 12 years old. Then a few months later, his mate mentioned he played a game called Warhammer 40,000 and he recognised it from the white dwarfs he'd been given. Boom, he was hooked and broke ever since. Tim Edwards says Chronicles of Narnia followed by Fighting Fantasy advanced fighting fantasy, and then Warhammer 3rd edition. Joe McLaren says, My brother ran a GM plus one game of the fighting fantasy role-playing game for him one evening. He said you could play it with miniatures. Then his mate brought round some miniatures and they played Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And he gave him a copy of White Dwarf 110 and his fate was sealed. Donald Fallon says fighting fantasy, specifically the Forest of Doom. Hmm, nefarious. Lee Pitt says the red box, basic D&D starter box, way back when, and then the Games Workshop ads in Dragon magazine. Alex Bates says it started with D&D. When I was around 12 years old, I wandered into a local hobby store, and they happened to have one small rack of Raoul Partha figures. I was immediately hooked. Rogue Trader, Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and any number of other tabletop war games came later, but it started with that little ranger in Mail with Bow. Andrew Wilson says Fighting Fantasy, then early Citadel miniatures around 85-ish, then in 87 with 40k on to Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and other RPGs, and he's never looked back. Daniel Carlson says he saw the second Citadel Compendium in a toy store and bought it for the cool pictures. He then realised there was some kind of game associated with the miniatures. Years later, he found Warhammer Fantasy Battle 3rd Edition in another store, and having money from his summer job, bought it and was hooked. Pete Royan says Dungeons and & Dragons, and then White Dwarf in the early 80s. James Young used to play Risk with his dad all the time as a kid. Then on his ninth birthday 
his dad got him Space Crusade, which led into Hero Quest and a lifelong love of the hobby. Tim Worthington says small scale World War II skirmish games, and then Warhammer 40,000. Matthew Street says my dad was a hobbyist. There was always model stuff around the house. Plane models, tanks, minifigs, and true 25mm Hinchcliffe. In 1982, there was a TV show called Blue and Grey, which was about a war artist press correspondent in the ACW. Dad, at least partly for himself, methinks, asked if I wanted a 15mm army, and would I paint it? He'd never really got my older brother in further than airfix spitfires. As such, one Saturday we drove to Games People Play in Notting Hill, and got an ACW Army by TTG. At the same time, we also acquired Cry Havoc, a medieval skirmish game illustrated by Gary Chalk. Soon I was painting 15mm ACW and regularly playing Cry Havoc, often on my own. So that's how I started. Although, truth be told, back in maybe 1979 or so, on a wet summer holiday in a static caravan in Hailing Island, Dad bought us the Osborne battle book, Knights at War. These books were historical picture books, but contained four war games with boards and all the pieces, including a D6 spinner if you didn't have a D6. Dad didn't want us bored if we couldn't get out in the evening for walks when the weather was poor, so these predate miniature wargaming for me. I remember Siege well, but we both loved the mass battle wagon train scenario of Arsouf. John Mollison says, Window shopping. I saw the old Mithril miniatures Lord of the Rings figures in the window and wandered into a paradise of games, including war games, which I was deeply intrigued by, but too young to understand. David Greenfield says, I was trying to get better brushes and paints for the custom contests on Toy Fair magazine, and went to my local flags for the first time. I picked up Zogrod Wartsnagger, a Terminator with lightning claws, and some Orc Freebooters too. Horace Stevenson says, watching YouTube videos about the hobby, particularly lore. Robert Howth says, Mum and Dad got me a game called Havoc. It had rubbery models and two large dreadnoughts that my brother converted into Iron Warriors. It used vague rules, red dice with skull sides, which meant killed, and blast sides, which meant hits. After that, it was Warhammer 40k 3rd edition. Well, that just about wraps up this foray into wargaming for today. As you have heard, there are at least 101 ways into wargaming, and I'm sure there are more. Feel free to share how you got into wargaming in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Peace. You'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows.